So for clearing the tier 8 dungeon, we got this demon sword, which I want to test out this episode. But our two-handed proficiency is really crap, so we're going to mash points into agility. And that's going to allow us to get up to 10 weapon master if we put one more point into it, which is going to make leveling proficiencies much easier. Plus we'll put points in athletics, which not only increase our running speed, but also increase our chance to dodge because we have the dodge skill. As far as the rest of our skill points, I'm not really sure what we're going to do with them. Probably like one point in leadership, one point in trainer as well. And then we'll just hold on to these last two skill points for now, I guess. So the last episode ended at Zargu's dungeon. We headed west west through the beastman lands then south through the high elf lands and as we entered araby there was a crossing down here which had a ton of caravans i think there was like seven that we extorted for gold and we're getting quite a bit because we have a lot of troops and they're really high quality we headed east towards the undead lands and two of their towns now belong to the lizardmen so we can go into them and at the first one we picked up braganza for 3,000 gold who's really good with crossbows he has 250 in it plus he comes with a siege crossbow which is one of the better crossbows i've seen we also gave him these bolts of ignition which we got from i think it was a medium dungeon they're really good though and maybe they ignite the target i'm not really sure we headed over to kemri checked their tavern there wasn't really anything there worth noting we headed through the rest of the lizardman towns down here and there's a skin priest in all three taverns that was pretty much it and to the west over here this undead castle was pretty undefended so we took it really easily i thought it had some better prisoners than it had but we didn't even pick any of them up it was kind of just a waste of time as they're just gonna retake it but as we were heading over to shockwood dungeon we got two random events gotrek wanted to teach us ignore pain so i think he has that which is really cool if that's the case it gives four percent damage reduction per point of iron flesh and he has 15 iron flesh with 140 hp so he is quite the beast he just doesn't have the greatest armor we haven't really found any good dwarf gear also we got a random event where this guy hero joins us and he's got 150 proficiencies i think we're just going to turn him into a gunman and with that we're hopefully going to end this episode with a dungeon we're going to bring in scarlock the wanderer who's a really good archer and then i went over his gear in the last episode but here's his bow it's really accurate and really fast and then we had these elven arrows on somebody else we just gave them over to him plus so these ones give him plus one power draw but they give less damage so i put them below and i think he's going to use these elven ones first and if you ask the melee because we're just getting zerged on he has this revenge which is really fast and as for his gear i'll just quickly go over it it's really good human gear it's probably the best gear set that we have actually and already with that we are now ready to begin the dungeon so there's a lot of dudes as you can see i'm hoping that uh we're gonna be okay here let's tank for these guys I'm not really able to shoot right now because, uh, well, this is not the best layout for anybody that can shoot. Whoa. Oh, Necromancer. That was a Necromancer. This dude's shooting at the enemy through the wall here. Whoa. A nice hit on that guy. This guy's a beast, a vampire guardian. Alright, that's the first room clear. The chest spawned over here. And we got reinforced skeleton hell armor. We have the regular version of this, which is 60 body, 30 leg. Reinforced corn warrior gauntlets. I think our ogres can use these. Alrighty, room number two. This one's pretty wide open. It's gonna be good for uh what's his name? Scarlock. And also uh orcs are pretty weak, I think. I mean there's a lot of them though. Gotta get over there. Tank for these guys. There's a troll, there we go. I was talking about in the last episode how the uh, orcs seemed kind of weak because they didn't have any trolls or anything. They do. Get them boys. Yeah. That was a stone troll by the way. It's not a regular troll. More beastly I would guess. It seemed like he was beastly. Taking a lot of hits. A lot of throwing weapons on these guys. Let's block them now. This guy's not. Oh, he is paying attention. Oh, that's a crush through blocks weapon if I've ever seen it. Take my throwing weapons. Level up my throwing. Whoa, nice dodge. 72 damage. Not bad. There's a 50% chance of double damage and 50 of triple damage. I'm not sure we're getting the procs there. It doesn't say. I think we did though. So this chest is in a super sneaky spot and the only reason why I even looked there is because I spent like, I don't know, 20 minutes 
looking for this chest one time. Reinforced Southern Imperial Armor. That's pretty good. Alrighty, room number three. Let's get everyone over here, I think. Good damage. Actually, that wasn't even good damage. Holy hell, I'm getting obliterated by that guy. I mean, you guys are charging. I told you guys to pull back. Mm, they're charging in. I don't know about the Scarlock the Wanderer setup. He's not in a good spot, I think. Oh man. I'm gonna have uh, Gotrek and the Paladin follow me. I don't know if these guys are blue, by the way. They're Reapers, but uh, I don't think they're any special units or anything. The Necromancer gave allies speed. Augmentation. I wonder if this guy has it. Dodges the attack, huh? It's not fair. Pull back, pull back. We'll go try got hit. Pull back. Oh, I'll take that for my team. Scarlet probably can outduel these guys, especially if I tank for him. Probably just plop him like there. Paladin can also help tank. He has a self heal and he has 10 in shield. I don't think there's any way that the Paladin gets hit by one of these bows. Let's see if Scarlet can actually. Oh, he's actually getting shot at, but that was a nice headshot. And another headshot, I think. Well played. Here we go. I aggroed some more dudes. They're coming up this corridor, and we got Scarlet the Wanderer up there hitting the ceiling with four shots in a row. There we go. Nice kill on the Necromancer. I could have taken these guys like without him. I have to not be in his way, by the way. Like, you saw he was not shooting there. Because I was in the way. But as long as I get in line of sight. Are these guys blue? It's, it's a little bit scary. Maybe that's because they're summoned. Already room number three. So I think the plan is we're going to put Scarlock in the back there, near the uh, entrance. And we're going to have Gotrek behind the Paladin. Paladin's like the tank, Gotrek is the, uh, he's in the cavalry group. We'll put him next to the archer actually. And this looks like a Chaos Dwarf level, which isn't too bad. A lot of gunmen are going to be coming in. Nice headshot. Well played. Just try to get to the side so the, uh, oh he's charging. Paladin took some damage. We gotta save him so he can heal back up. He does Oh god. That's, yeah, good job, go trick. Holy F. What the hell? I got hit by two projectiles, I think, just now. Alright, I wait for two of my heals to take. I wanna say it took like 40 seconds. Oh. Reinforcements have arrived. Okay, we'll just uh, pull back. Scarlock. Nice. Oh, switched up on me. This guy is the one that needs to get nice kill by Gotrek. Just annihilated that dude. I feel like Gotrek might have Mighty Blow as well. Which gives him 4% damage per point of Power Strike, like I have. That's not true. That's impossible. Oh my god. Scarlet the Wonder got knocked out. How did he get a shot off from here? This is the dude that just knocked him out. That's a bummer. Moral of the story. <laughs> Probably don't bring squishy units in dungeons. I still want to try the rattling gunner though. Already room number, I want to say five, but it could be four. Just two of us left. So the two handed guys take out the throwing weapon. Don't risk it. They do too much damage. Let these guys just evade back and forth. Okay. That was a lot of damage. That must have been a headshot. Ouch. We can wait. Nope. We can't actually. Right as I said that, they started charging. Sauce so bombs. Oh man, that's a lot of dudes. Bombs, save us. That's it. I'm just gonna start. Oh man, that's too many, I think. That's too many. We're screwed. 
charge. Need the uh, chaos troll in here to cleave. Paladin's gonna be effed. Go trick could survive though. I could see him definitely surviving. I'm gonna try to draw these guys over this way. 3v1. Okay. I'm getting shot up from behind by this shaman guy, caster. Is anyone up? They're both up. Holy cow. I wanna show you guys that I'm not playing with uh, reduced difficulty or whatever. Let's, uh, yeah. Damage a player and friends on normal. Apparently I can buff combat speed as well to fastest. I guess this makes the enemy harder in combat, but I don't know if I want to do that. We're going to keep it on normal for now. And maybe in like the next playthrough we'll do fastest. But yeah, I'm just surprised those guys didn't get knocked out. And one would think that I had the difficulty set to like these guys take less damage based on the fact that they were able to survive that. We found the chest and we got some pretty good chaos gloves. I think ogres can use these. Reinforced Slanesh warrior shield, a really big shield. And already, which one is this? No. Number, oh god, get back, get back, get back. Oh, they won't, they won't, we have to charge. Yeah, they just, they just, uh, sit at the edge like that. There's nothing you can do about it, I think. Just have to go, go, go. It would be a good position to hold up there at the top, but we cannot, unfortunately. Bombs. What did these do? Whoa, that guy just, uh, freaking jumped. Oh, gee. Paladin's stuck, he's effed. Wonder if I can just uh, jump down there with him. Gotrek's stuck too. If I take damage by falling, I think I do. Oh, I didn't take any damage, nice. Gotrek's killing things. If I can just get to the end, it's over. Oh, I know there's a guy behind me, but I think the end's right here. Come on, stay alive guys. I need you guys for the next dungeon. I think this is the end. Come on. Yes. Holy crap, that was insanely clutch. Hey, you guys go in. Uh, just tank, I guess. Paladin's just sitting back. I don't want any of that. Okay, I can start swinging now. There's some people tanking for me. Let's take out this mummy. Yeah, nice. Let's wait for the heals to come in. While we're waiting, there's also a chest down here. Hardened Dreadmaster Helm, not bad. So you enter into here, the chest was down that corridor. And to the left here, there's a room that the chest can spawn in, but we've already got it. So let's just run to the exit. I think we might be able to just run by these guys down here. Don't mind me. Nah, don't hit me. If you uh, are gonna be nice. Thank you. And wow, that's two in a row that I one-shotted. That's crazy. As for the loot, we got this harp. We already had a harp. I forget how we got this. I think it was a random event. I really hope that's not the special loot. I'll just go through the loot so you guys can see. But uh, wow, that is disappointing. I cannot believe that loot. A harp. I wonder what it does. So I looked on the War Sword Discord and from what I gathered, Harp is a tier one treasure. And the longer the dungeon is, the higher chances of a higher tier treasure. I'm not sure if difficulty impacts that, which in my opinion it should. I don't think you should be able to get a tier one treasure from a long tier nine dungeon, but that's just my opinion. It doesn't really bother me too much though, because the main thing we're looking for is a nine attribute and skill points, which we're gonna be getting in the next episode, where we're gonna be doing the tier 10 dungeon and then it's time to conquer the world. Wow, that's a elite video.